Hello, everybody. Welcome back. So today we're going to do something kind of fun. I have been thinking about what are some of the, what I would call my big predictions of where the diet industry is going, um, probably in the next year or so. And so I kind of came up with a few and I'm going to start with some of my personal experience. You know, I work with thousands of women inside my own program. I, this podcast alone has reached over 55 million people. I can't even believe that. Uh, and then my free course that I've done, over a million people have taken that. So all the talking that I do to people, all of the discussions, all of the like ways that I watch the industry and stuff, <clears throat> I've kind of come up with what I think is going to be um, some of the next things that you're going to see that are going to kind of shift the way that we think about losing weight. So the very first thing is, and I noticed this in my own membership, self-care is actually making a big comeback for women. <laughs> and I know that sounds crazy, but one of the things that I coach on all the time, in fact, I was coaching on it today, one of my members who she feels really bad at night about not being productive. So in order to not feel bad about being basically not productive at night, she eats as a way to like escape all of that shame and all of that worry that she's not doing things, the calling herself lazy, feeling guilty for taking care of herself. We work so hard in my program on number one, just helping women understand why do we feel this way anyway? And what I was explaining today is, you know, historically, and I'm talking way back in the day, a, a woman's job was literally to take care of the home. I think about my great, great grandmother. She was a, um, she was a woman who she was married with nine kids. She was on a farm. That is what they did. And they had like a hundred hands that worked on the farm. And her job was literally to get up in the morning at four o'clock, cook food for kids, cook food for farm hands two to three times a day on an open fire oven, y'all. She didn't feel guilty at night for being done because her role was very clear. So she worked hard all day. At the end of the day, you know, you just went to bed. You might have read a little bit, but you went to bed. Cut to, you know, the middle of the 1900s, women start going to the workforce. Unfortunately, not only do we get into the workforce and we start working, you know, a 40 hour week, but the role of a woman didn't change. We got like the right to work and the right to, you know, get a checkbook and own your own home. But what we didn't do is we didn't change that at night, we were going to be wore out like a man. But we were still going to have kids and we we're still going to have a house. We got both. So all of us, I, I just think it's so important for us to realize one of the reasons why we don't practice self-care and why we overeat at night is because we haven't changed the collective opinion for the women, like for all of us. We're still feeling guilty at night that we work just as hard as anybody else all day long. Then we walk in the door and we got to start second shift. We got to start our second job, which is the mothering, the cleaning, the taking care of things. So I think that one of the big things that's going to shift when it comes to weight loss is until women really understand how to take care of themselves, to drop shame, drop judgment and drop the guilt for actually being tired and realizing their basic human needs aren't being met until that happens. Guess what? Weight loss is so hard. And if the diet industry just keeps trying to make us thin without helping us have a better life, diets will continue to fail. And I am starting to see a shift. Not only do I teach this completely different than what you're going to get at a Weight Watchers, a Noom, like a keto, a Whole30, whatever your gym or your trainer's boot camp uh, six-week thing is, 
they're all really good about getting us amped up for a short period of time to add a third job. And this is what I want you to hear. Self-care is going to be one of the things that's going to have to become important in our weight loss industry if we ever want anything to work. Because if you are already working and on top of that, you are running a house and you have kids and stuff, and then you're going to add the third job of a 12-week uh, weight loss kickstart, detox for three weeks, if you're going to add a third job, women crumble. Because what we really need is to learn how to care for ourselves. The majority of the women I work with, they tell me, you know what my biggest problem is? At night, I'm standing in the kitchen and I'm eating because I don't know what to do with myself. All I really, like, they know in their bones they need to take a break. They need to be able to sit down for a few minutes or maybe they need a night off, whatever it is but they feel so guilty that they're not being the perfect mother to their children. They feel so bad that there's some laundry that's undone. They feel like shame that their kitchen doesn't look as tidy as, you know, Sarah's kitchen over here. Until we really start understanding that the best way to lose weight is to figure out what emotional needs is food serving for me? And how do I start taking care of those emotional and self-care needs weight loss is going to fall flat. And that's what I teach in my program. It's not so much about what are we going to take away from you when you are losing weight? Women don't need anything else taken away from them. Our time, half the time, our dignity is taken away all the time, making us think that we got to look a certain way in order to conform. We have plenty of things that have been taken away from us over the years. The last thing we need to do is take more things away. We have to change the conversation in weight loss. It's about what are we giving to ourselves? What is it that's missing? Let's fill those holes so that food is no longer the only solution to filling a hole. So I think self-care is going to make a big comeback. Now, I want to tell you about a couple of things that I've included that's really helped me. Um, one of them is I use this thing called the higher dose blanket. <laughs> so I call it my little warm burrito. Um, if you don't know, I own three businesses. I have the No BS Weight Loss Program. I have the No BS Business Membership where I help women and men who are just starting out in an online coaching consulting space build a business to change their life, to change the lives of their children. I also own a sports bar here in Nolensville, Tennessee. If you're ever here right now, it's called Brothers. It's going to be changing over to Ballinsville in a few months. But if you're ever in Nolensville, Tennessee, please stop by. We have fried dill pickle spears. <laughs> so I own three businesses. And I will tell you, when I am leaving at the end of the day, when I leave my office around four or five o'clock, my brain is just spinning. It's going really hard. And I refuse, number one, to eat to comfort myself or eat to relax or eat to bring a, like ground myself so that I'm not still worked up, uh, adrenaline rushing from the day. So I bought this blanket called the higher dose blanket. It's an infrared sauna blanket. And what you do is you warm it up. I do it naked. So I bought the towel that you do it with where I get in the towel because it gets wicked hot. You want something between you and your skin and that blanket. Trust me, I have burned my foot so many times. It doesn't like burn you, burn you, but I'm just like, oh, like that's hot. <laughs> and then you get in and you it has like a dual zipper. So you zip yourself up and you lay in it for anywhere from 30 to like 45 minutes. For some people, it makes them sweat. Um, I'm not a big sweater uh, when in situations like that. I only sweat when I'm working out. So, but it gives me like 30 minutes to rest and I can literally feel my nervous system calming down. I can relax. I usually lay there and read a book. Sometimes I just watch TV. I have it laid out on my bed and it is a great way for me to relax. So it's higher dose blanket. If y'all want to, you can go to, I will tell you super quick. If you go to nobsweightloss.com 
slash faves, F-A-V-E-S, you will be able to see the higher dose blanket on there. We will make sure that we link that. But that's one of the big ways that I've been doing it. Another thing that I've been doing is first thing in the morning, I have been reading versus just getting up, drinking coffee and diving into my work. I have a lot of, to, I like to read self-development and stuff like that. What I have found that has helped me kind of start my day a little bit better than just immediately starting work is to sit in a comfortable chair. I read for about 15 to 20 minutes. It's like it primes my brain. Like my brain is not ready to go when I first wake up, but reading helps me kind of get woke up while I drink my coffee. So that is one of the other ways. I think that sometimes we think self-care only happens when we're dog ass tired. For me, starting my day with some kind of intentionality has been a game changer. So I read for about 15 minutes right now. Then I switch gears. I get my iPad out and I use an app called Good Notes. This is where I journal. Like I, if you're in my business membership, you know that you get a planner with my business membership. I plan my day on here. You'll see I've got podcasting going on right now. I just follow my calendar, but I write about my day. And then if you're in my weight loss membership, you know, we also have a planner for weight loss and we have a planner for maintenance. Every day, I also plan my, I, I use the weight loss planner right now. I'm not trying to lose weight, but I like to use the weight loss planner sometimes just to keep in touch with what my clients are doing. And then I switch to the maintenance one for sometimes just to keep in touch with what all my maintenance clients are doing and answering. So I do that in good notes. They're both PDFs that are included in my membership. So you get to download them. But if you're a digital girl like me, you can put them inside good notes. And that's where I do my writing. For me, self-care is spending some time with myself, developing a relationship with me. So doing a little reading, doing a little journaling, that first 30 minutes of the day, I've spent time with me and I've spent time with a book pouring something positive into my brain. Like, I think a lot of us think self-care takes forever and it just doesn't. Self-care can, I always like to tell my clients, there's like three levels of self-care. There's the like micro self-care that no one sees. Micro self-care is where we pay attention to how we're talking to ourselves and we change the conversation. We don't allow ourselves to beat ourselves up all day. Micro self-care might also look like having a really bad day at work, sending the kids in the house and you sitting in the car and listening to one of your favorite songs and breathing before you go in and face the dog who wants to be fed and all the other things that are going on. Then there's the next level self-care, which is what I was talking about. This is like, this is not the big ass self-care. This is more like what people could see that takes a little bit of time, but not an exorbitant amount of time. It's where you're finding a little bit of space in your day that's like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, to just put you back on your own personal to-do list. And so for me, 30 minutes in the morning, dedicated to a little reading and a little journaling, and then in the evening, ending my day with about 30 minutes in my blanket, that's a lot, like that right there just really helps me. And I think that that's gonna be a big thing that you see in weight loss is a bigger emphasis on caring for ourselves adding to versus taking away. Uh, another big thing I think that's going to be uh, changing, and I've already seen it changing, is carbs are making their dramatic comeback. For years, they have been villainized. And I, you know, I went through a bodybuilding phase where I competed. I did the whole keto stuff. I did the low carb stuff. I never felt worse in my life than when I was doing that. Now, I'm not saying every single person feels that way, but some of the research is starting to show that for women especially, low and no carb does not work well for them. It actually turns them into a little fat storing uh, machine. 
And if you ever add the carbs back in, it triggers um, disordered eating. It just does all kinds of stuff. So one of the things I've been researching is about like, well, kind of how many carbs a day does a woman really need? And the general guideline from nutritionists and stuff is we need about 130 grams a day. Now, if you know me, I do not teach counting calories, counting your macros and doing those things. But 130 grams a day, surprisingly, would be like eating nine slices of bread. And most people be like, oh, oh my God, not nine slices of bread. I could never do that. Well, <clears throat> what we need to do is we need to just start thinking about carbs in a new way. Carbs are what give women hormonal balance. And when we are in hormonal balance, guess what's e what's a lot easier to do? Not eat our fucking face off because we're so fucking tired. Hormonal balance also helps our moods. Guess what that does? When, we, when we're not having dramatic mood swings, we're not relying on food to soothe us. By just getting our carb intake up, we do ourselves such a solid. And any woman that is exercising, strength training, you definitely need to be eating your carbs. If you want to have muscle, if you want to have good bone density, I would get my carbs in. So I think we're going to start seeing that carbs are going to make a dramatic comeback. Just like in every, every time we swing to one way on a weight loss thing, we swing back. And I think we're going to find that we're going to find a middle ground with carbs. And it's not just you got to eat the clean ones or the healthy ones. I think that there's also going to be a big push that in weight loss to learn how to put taste, pleasure, and joy back into the mix. That is what we're doing inside of No BS. I think that that needs to happen. So many of us have only learned how to lose weight through extreme restriction, uh, cutting out foods we love, villainizing all the foods, and very low calorie. And I just think what we're going to see is one of the big things, if we're ever going to make weight loss approachable, accessible, and easy, we have to be able to include all the foods. You know, weight loss is not just about how fucking miserable can you get in order to lose your weight so that I guess then you can be happy. No, weight loss is about what is this lifestyle that I really want for myself? How do I want to feel like I've done podcasts on this, but there's just more to it when it comes to food. There's the emotional side. Sometimes we do eat for emotion. There's nothing wrong with having cake on your birthday. There's nothing wrong with if your mama makes something special. Let's have a little. We also want it to feel physically good. We want to learn how to, you know, maybe reduce, or eliminate, or just not eat as often some foods that we know that when we eat them, we get diarrhea butt. We get an upset stomach. One of the things I'm working on right now, and I'm going to tell you right now, this is a hard fucking pill to swallow. But coffee is not agreeing with Corinne like it used to. I'm down to one cup a day and sometimes only a half because when I drink it and I have tried high acid, low acid, you name it, dark roast, mild roast. I have tried every supposedly stomach friendly coffee. There's just something in my body that is not tolerating coffee very well these days. And I'm drastically cutting it back. And I'm almost at the point where I'm ready to just give it up. So we want to think about how it energetically mixes with us. But the bottom line is I think carbs are going to make a comeback and that weight loss in general is going to start having a more nuanced approach. It's not just going to be all or nothing, good or bad. You're either on plan or you're off. You got to cut all these calories. I think that we're starting to find that old school mentality is just not working. And I really hope that that happens because it is awful to sit around and want to lose weight so bad. And the only way that you know how to do it is by punishing yourself. Uh, and then another thing that I think is coming up that's going to be really popularized is devices. So I, the, an example of a weight loss device is the aura ring. 
I wear one. Now mine looks like hell. If you're watching the video on YouTube, I lift weights with mine. So I've like rubbed half the stuff off of it, but Corinne needs to get better at taking a ring off when she works out. But I think devices like this are going to be a huge player because I think what we're starting to see in weight loss is that we're looking at more data points than just the scale. One of the things that the Aura Ring does is it helps you understand like your sleep. That has been the biggest thing that it has helped me with. I have become someone who realizes after tracking, I think I've been tracking now for three years, that when I get less than eight hours of sleep, my recovery rates go down, my heart rate's a little higher during the day, and it starts affecting all my scores. When my heart rate's having to on average beat more while I'm sleeping or while I'm going through the day, that means my body's having to work harder and it's even tiring me out more. So I have just found over the course of using my aura ring, I need at least eight hours of sleep. And what the aura ring will do is it gives you lots and lots of different things to look at. But the main one for me is sleep. And it helps me understand each day. Today is a day to do less activity, to prioritize more of my self-care. So on days when, when my aura ring tanks, I know this is a walking day. This is a spend a little extra time in your higher dose blanket. This might be a day I'm going to have, I'm going to need to take a 20 minute nap, whatever that is. Maybe I just need to go to bed earlier today. So it really, I think what we're going to see in weight loss is you're going to see more and more people like me helping you see there are so many different things that we need to pay attention to in order to not just lose weight, but to actually feel better. The whole point of weight loss for most people is I just want to feel better. And so being able to use things like the Aura Ring, it's O-U-R-A, allows you to kind of track more of those indicators. And I would just love to see more of you doing that. Again, we will link everybody to that. If you go to that nobsweightloss.com slash faves, you will see a link to, um, to where you can find out more about the Aura Ring. I think the last big shift in the industry that I want to talk about is um, the new class of weight loss drugs. I have already done two podcasts on this, so we will also link to that in the show notes for you. I highly recommend you go and listen to them. More and more of you are going to be probably offered the new class of weight loss drugs. I personally do not think they're a bad thing. I think there's a lot of shame that gets wrapped around it. I think they are just a tool, but let me give you one warning. And you will hear me talk about this in my two-part series. One part of the series is just my opinions about the shame and the judgment. And the second part of the series is where I talk to a couple of doctors who are in this space who also are certified to coach weight loss through my No BS program. And what we talked about so much is you really still have to do your emotional work. Like you really still have to understand why you've been eating because when you do these weight loss drugs, you do not want to lose the weight in the entire time, not be taking a look at your life, to not learn how to talk nice to yourself, to stop being hard on yourself. Uh, you don't want to um, still have a shitty body image because you're taking weight loss drugs. You still need all of these other things. Like if you, like, who cares if you're losing weight if every night you're feeling guilty as fuck for not just go, 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 go? Because at some point, you will have to come off those weight loss drugs. You will not take them for the rest of your life. And when your hunger comes back and things come back online, because there's such a good reset for a lot of people. But if your brain and your mind didn't change, you're going to be left with all your old hunger cues and still the very things you were eating over. And I just don't want that for people. I don't want, and I also don't want people to take these drugs and only give the drugs credit. Like you still have to decide to eat or not to deal with your life. You still have to decide how you're going to think about your body. You still have to decide what you're going to think when you step on the scale, whether you're going to be paranoid if it's going to keep going, worried that you'll gain your weight, or proud that you are showing up for yourself 
and learning how to truly care for yourself each and every day. So I don't want anyone to think that they're going to take these drugs and somehow that that's all you need. Most of us need to be working on our relationship with food. We need to be working on our relationship with ourselves, our body, and the scale as we lose weight. And that's what we're doing inside of No BS. I have a lot of clients who do weight loss surgery, who are doing the weight loss drugs. And they tell me, you know, in the beginning, it works really well. You're kind of high off the stuff, like high off the weight loss. But then like your drama comes back. The way you talk to yourself comes back and we're helping them deal with all of that because my mission is to help women literally lose weight for good and feel as amazing as they deserve. Just losing weight doesn't do that. We have to teach ourselves how to feel good about ourselves. We have to teach ourselves how to trust this is really the last time. And that's what I focus on inside the NoBS weight loss membership. So please make sure that if you're interested in joining, that you check us out at NoBSWeightLoss.com. But these are the things that I think are going to be the big new changes that are coming in weight loss. Stop trying to do diets that aren't addressing these things. The modern weight loss is a much more bigger, fuller, encompassing approach than our old school dieting has always taught us. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. Check out the Aura Ring. Check out that higher dose blanket. If you're on social and you see me posting about it, let me know what you think and ask me any questions that you have. I'll talk to y'all next week.